guys even aware what you guys did to our lives. Are you guys even aware of what you guys did to us as a family on that day? If the house was clean, what about the head? Because oh, the guy who entered the, into the house was wearing a head with a short dread. So obviously it belongs to him. If the house was clean when he came home from hospital, what about the head? I'm not saying being a go clean or be clean, but his clothes are still up and it. So I want to be a cleaner, you know, as keeping his coke. Thank you. Please repeat. Yes, My daughter, I recollect the evidence of Tumelo Matala. Is that when the intruders came in, he took his phone, ran along with it into a particular room where there were children there and hid it somewhere on the, on the, on the bedding there, in one of the blankets there. It was not specifically referring to this phone that was found in the, in the, in the that is depicted on the pictures of Mr. Musia. That was. What's your comment, ma'am? My lord, what I know, what I, what I can comment on, my lord, is that if there was no evidence, my lord, we will not be having this trial. If there is any allegation of the house being cleaned before the police arrived, it's tempering. You're supposed to be charging that person for defeating the ends of justice because that's, that's exactly what it is. Where are the charges? Why are they not before the courts? In my opinion, Zandi is the weakest link in all the witnesses that were in the house. Why do I say that? She's the one who's most dramatic. She's the one who wants to be on the mic. She's the one who wants to give out the account of everything that happened. But the problem is she doesn't write down her script and she always forgets. We opened up this video with Uzandi crying in court. Uh, to me, that video can't get old. It cannot get old for me. But let's go down what went on. According to Uzandi, Dumelo says, why was the house cleaned? Hmm? And I think that's a fair question coming from Senzo's friend who betrayed Senzo on that night. Unless he comes clean, we're still counting him amongst the people who betrayed Senzo. So he says, okay, we came back from the hospital and the house was clean, but whoever cleaned the house, why did they just leave the hat there? That's the only evidence that they wanted found. And you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of one of my shows that I love to watch, which is The Blacklist on Netflix and also 007. Have you ever noticed that whenever there's a crime scene or there's been a murder or some gruesome activity, they always send a cleaning crew, a cleaning crew to clean up? So my question is, why does it seem like Mapiri is very skilled at being part of a cleaning crew? Was this... A spaza house or was this a tavern? What other crimes has happened in that house that Mapiri has quickly come to the aid of? Why does it seem like this was well orchestrated? I don't know. My imagination might be one running wild here, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Why did they leave the hat? And most importantly, why was it so important for them to clean? And why won't Dumelo come out and tell us the truth? It's been 10 years. It's about time. what loyalty does he have to Uzandi, to Ukeli Kumalo, to Uma Kum uh, Keli Kumalo's mother? What loyalty does he have to these people, Tumelo and Umtoro? Why are they so loyal and disloyal to the Meiwa family? We already know there's an affidavit that confirms that the house was cleaned by the neighbor Umapiri. My question to you is why has she not been arrested for defeating the ends of justice? Why for the last 10 years has she been out and about? I'm not just trying to go after Magoku Mapiri, but she cleaned the house and she confirms she cleans the house and that's automatically a crime. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on why she has not been held accountable for that moment of lack of judgment or planned cleaning schedule. What is it that they were promised? Um, yeah, let me know in the comment section your thoughts on that. But let's go back to Omnisi. We did hear Sergeant Mahoro saying what? If there wasn't any evidence, we wouldn't be in court today. So was the hat planted or 
was the hat really something that was worn by one of the accused who had short dreadlocks on let's listen on to nisi give surgeon maholo a summary because you know she is the investigating agent she doesn't remember though the statements when we all arrived there it was trampled upon already personally we never found any bullet or, or empty cartridge now you have in, a, in no uncertain terms told this court that uh, you never had an that you never gave yourself time to go and consult with the witnesses who were in the house except to have received information from Prikatiya Kininda and having read the statement that you can't remember now, not so. My Lord, as I've indicated, my Lord, that there is one witness, my Lord, whom, uh, as per the instruction of Brigadier mm. Kininda, I confronted my Lord and uh, obtained a statement from him. Thank you. Mm. Now, there's a description of the suspect who, according to the witnesses who were in the house, gave when they made their initial statements. Immediately the following day after the, ex I mean after the incident had taken place. Do you understand? I understand. Do you have a clue of a description that these witnesses gave of how the first intruder looked like? when you got into the house? No, my lord. Ah. Uh, Do you know what description did the people who were in the house give as they gave the statement of how the second suspect, according to them, looked like when you got into the house on the date of the incident? My lord, what I, I can recall as I'm standing here, my lord, is that one was shot with dreadlocks, my lord, and the other one was tall. Where did you get that from? As I said, there are certain statements which I've read, and also I got the briefing from Brigadier Kininda. This witness, whose statement that you read, that it described, I don't know which suspect, as short and dreadlocks, and the other one being tall, which witnesses are those? My Lord, I cannot say it in detail, my Lord, which witness is that, my Lord, but I know, my Lord, that there was a short uh, suspect with dreadlocks and a tall uh, 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 suspect, my Lord. Uh, let me help you. Now, uh, Mrs. Zandi Kumalo, the very first witness who the state called to come and testify about this incident. This is how he described one of the assailants, or the so-called assailants. That one, the first assailant, or the first intruder, had dreadlocks up to his neck. He was wearing a hat. He had big eyes which were protruding to the outside. And he also had facial contours as if his bones were protruding or his bones were visible. Uh, yes, visible. And he also had a shiny skin. Do you get that? I understand. Is that what you could have found or to send from Ms. Zandi's statement, uh, Zandi Kumalo's statement, as you went through the statement? Or you can't remember? I can't remember. Thank you. Lili Lapi Mnyango. Segi ali wage manjo mnye ya hai, hai, bepa nspezu. And then, uptema kusuga lianja alo, washi spam. 
Sure. Ma bathroom. bathroom, no 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 ka utu eh umganga oh, yeah, yeah. okay. lobe simla nde eh, pezuli spirit view mm, mm. yeb yeah. abale yange ni kamera nube uzugu uzugu yengezo ke mna maka nshots eh ama bili after lapu ngise patrum ngi popole ngo ngu mnyang wase patrum na kona ngi popole ngi leza and spans and then maxen jalo giboni nangu senzi kichima ewe fisa patu kwe 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 stand ni no sofa kisi mm. na haibu ubale ila ni manji kwa zingi azbuzu utaibu kwenza kala maxen jalo ngbone no maana uya landil na uke lula ndile mfa kwa senzi uya meme saibu sisan 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 umi enuam sisan umi enuam hau maxen jalo nangu senzi kwe tuke pega pezu mm. and then u... lama tota apase puma apulu kwenye labale ka manji kakona Ute uma uma ehla le sofeni kanjalo wafika lo mfana ethu uzothatha ifoni ka Kelly ebi 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 chatcha phezu kwe ES4 ebi chatcha phezu ko sofa ngala usenza be willing kakhona me ethu uyafika lo uma ethu ayithatha ifoni ethu ayifihla kanti umfana umbonile wafika omshange indolelwane esini uma wela hlapha ntse ifoni umfana wathi lokho ngubuka ngise bathroom Mm. Give the bathroom in Popoli Mianco. And then Max and Jalo up home. Okay, let's look at my messenger, look at my messenger. My members are Jalo naming Pumas and Bonut Lumfan Sam Bill. Get naming your fear and your sources and Kumbu Lutu and Gifonam Gifagipat go, come Camelo, ne, 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 things that are happening through a bathroom door and this is a comment that someone left in one of my videos and i said you know what i'm gonna go to the bathroom door and let me see how much i can see because your line of vision is not exactly clear 360 okay it's it's very very limited but zandi saw everything from the bathroom and i've put here um you know the recreation of the house and you know the bathroom is not next to the living room where Senzo Meyua fell and died, allegedly. Although we know the pathologist confirmed um, from the post-mortem st- um, testimony that he died instantly. There was no running involved. He died, He would have died instantly. Um, so Ozandi, that's what she had to say. But let me know your thoughts on zandi's vision and what she is able to see all from the bathroom door comment down below remember i always say comment down below it helps create um engagement not just for our videos not just for the views but it also is thought provoking because you guys sometimes come up with some things that even i haven't thought of and i'm not an expert but i enjoy just looking at the tiny tiny details to crack a hole um and the story so do you think baloi will finally call mapiri to the stand is she one of the people that is going to be coming to the stand but let's get back to the Gauteng high court and him nisi break it down even further for a whole surgeon in the sense of you were trying to uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the state has appointed people Uguti ama hawks for instance abantaba aba 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 ne experience ukuthi baba bahendle le licala le baba handle le 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 meko so um sisebenzana no mpoisa we are trying as hard as possible and we hope ukuthi mhlambe one day they will actually be able ukuthi bakwazi kuthola abantu kodwa nathi nje sizama ngakho konke kusemandleni sibanike yonke information esikwazi ukubanika yona no kuye sokana uma nga yes we proceed and then sase suka ke lapho sa driver sangena ku N3 from there we drove and uh, went into the uh, onto the N3 yes mase sendleleni kanjalo eh ngangizwa nje senze lokho ikhuluma eh notumelo efonini nami utumelo bengingamazi ngamazi ngalolo suku lolo Eloke mche kuguti e uhaufa. As we were traveling, uh, I heard Senzo, Senzo was talking and he was talking uh, to Tumelo. At the time, Tumelo was not known uh, to me and uh, he was trying to found, uh, find out from him as to how far he was. You guys even know what you guys did to our lives. 
Are you guys even aware of what you guys did to us as a family on that day? Miss Kumalo? Miss Kumalo? Miss Kumalo? The damage that you guys caused. Miss Kumalo, you're not you're not supposed to do that. You my mother strongly object to this. <laughs> In the strongest possible terms we object to this. Mr. Baloy, do you want to as, as the business is still in the process of giving evidence? I, I don't know what my learned friend is objecting to. The procedural rules, the witness is testifying to court and addressing court, not the accused persons in the document. That's my objection. There you are. That's, that's fair enough, my lord. Ma'am, you're still <coughs> in the process of identifying the persons who came into the house. If you can just do that and refrain from further comments. Yes, you, you pointed to someone. He was one of the people that came yes. to the house. But he was uh, behind or he was at the back. And then Sister Hale Just a minute, you're still pointing a person. Who is it? It's him. It's him. The second one there. Lois Lili Lapez. Now, I'm talking to Sitwala. Described the first assailant. In the following way. He was not light, not dark, just light. He had visible cheekbones with dreadlocks up to his neck. He was wearing a hat and also a jersey or a jacket. Is that what you could also discern from Togo's Sistwala statement if you read it or you can't remember as well? I can't remember which Thank statement, you. my lord. Uh, now, under cross-examination, Mr. Twala, Mtogozi Sutwala, went on to amplify the description that he gave in his statement. And this is what he said under cross-examination. That the first assailant, or the first intruder, was not really tall, but he was shorter. He was not dark, not light. He used the word cappuccino. He had the high cheekbones, which were longish. He also used the word is corbo, is como. He also had dreadlocks up to his neck. That is what he told this court as a full description of the first assailant. Did you get that? I understand, my lord. Thank you. Then finally, Mr. Mazala, Tumelo Mazala, actually not finally, Tumelo Mazala went on to describe the first assailant as a person with dreadlocks and big eyes. Do you understand? I understand, my lord. Now, because in the case that you are investigating, you say there are certain things that you know about this case, and there are certain things that you do not know about this case, and I can't fault you on that. This is a description that the witnesses gave of the person who they allege was wielding a firearm when he got into the house. Do you understand? I understand, my lord. So here's what I'm looking forward to hearing this week. 
Will the ballistic expert finally be paid by legal aid so we know whether it was a revolver or a 9mm? Will um, we finally get the section 205 while um, Advocates Banda continues to read the bank statement? What are you looking forward to in court this week? But of course, the highlight of the week is going to be Ngomezulu returning to court from going to see the doctor and Judge Rata. What is going to be his overall reaction? We hope he's taken the weekend into, we hope he's used the weekend to take a chill pill. And, um, you know, I wonder how he's going to respond. I, I, Judge Rata is actually unpredictable. I wonder how he's going to respond. Is he going, is Ngomezulu going to write another letter of apology? Is Ngomezulu then, is uh, Judge Rata going to then read that letter of apology to the court in public to all of us when he has the option to do that all in chambers i don't know let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below that's it from us today if you've made it this far remember to like comment and subscribe if you don't comment in the videos i actually don't know you have watched the video so drop an emoji even if you have nothing to add to the conversation just so i get to know our family right here in the comment section thanks so much for watching catch you on our next upload and before you leave remember to like this video because it helps get this video out to so many people thanks for watching catch you on our next upload